this is a introduction to Smart Notebook 11. Now keep in mind that I'm very new to this software and also I'm just showing the Smart Notebook 11 training notebook document which comes when you download your notebook software. So I didn't create this myself, it was created by Smart Technologies. Okay, so what's new? Well, I've said here you've got your actions, your tools and your properties. What you notice is different is your toolbar at the top. Now in a previous video I showed how you can customise your toolbar, so you can visit that video to view that. What they've got here is called an activity builder. Okay, so basically what you can do is add an image and have objects and you can determine if it accepts or rejects them. So let's have a quick look at that. If I grab a new page and I need to grab an object, I might choose I don't know, Apple. Oops. Picture. Let's drag it across. So I have an apple here. And I might type some words in. I might type type in um, okay so I've typed in a range of words here if I click my activity builder Select Activity Builder. Select my object. And select Edit. Okay, so this is my object here. Now if I want an object to be accepted, add all remaining objects. So I want Apple to go in. I want Orange go in, I want banana because they're all fruits, but I don't want frog and I don't want fox because they're not fruits. If I select done, then as students come up they can drag across frog and it rejects it. Fox it rejects it, orange is accepted, Apple is accepted. To me, this is just simply a vo a similar version of the vortex, where you can have two categories and it's accepted or rejected. And um, up to your discretion. Not one of my favourite applications. This next one here is looking at internet browser. So basically, you can browse the internet within Smart Notebook software. This is a common feature of other interactive whiteboard software as well. So if I go to uh, edit, sorry, insert, my mistake, internet browser. So you can see here, this is internet browser, so I can copy the URL that I'd like to use and it will play automatically with the notebook software. So if I just grab one I've got open here, so this is quick web, copy the URL, Go to my notebook and paste the URL. And you can see here that my web browser is functioning within notebook software. It's a pretty cool feature. Now the next one here is looking at your text. Now text is improved, you can edit it and change it. If you go to my text up the top here, you can see here I have automatic access to changing my preferences. Next feature here is looking at the crown. So if I select a new page, select my pen tool and my drop down menu, I have crown so you can draw with crown. You may find this useful for JPs. This next feature here is one that I really like, is actually be able to fill an irregular shape. So if I grab a new page, my pen tool, 
It's one of my favourite new features. And if you draw a shape, previous in other notebook software you weren't able to fill that. But if I select the fill bucket, I can fill it, which is fantastic. So if you have an irregular shape that you've created, you can use it using the line tool and then you can fill it. That's one of my favourite features of Notebook 11. The next one here is grouping and ungrouping using the shape gesture tool. To show you that one here. So you highlight two shapes, you can shake and it will group them. This will be highly functional if you're actually working on a smart board. I'm working on my laptop at the moment so I can't show you that feature. The other option is here you can actually reset a page. I actually like at the top here. If you see I've got a new page, I've also got delete page which is a neat feature. You can delete a, new, a page rather quickly. There are also the creative pen. You can customise your own pen tools or there are new pen tools available. So if I click my pen, to pen tool and I go down to my creative pen, I like this one. You can customise your pen tool, but I'm yet to see educational value in using the Creative Pen. I use the Creative Pen in terms of creating stamps, as you would in KidPix. I think that's a great tool. But Creative Pen in education, I'm not too sure. There's also here is a faded ink. So you can see here that you can fade your ink and you can set your properties for it. So if I select my pen tool, and go to my properties, oops, and you can select the amount of seconds that you'd like your pen to fade out. Um, that's a very rare feature that I use. If I want to use it, I'd use the magic pen, which is, has a five second delay, and I'd use it that way anyway. What's really neat is the new recording system, which I really love this feature. So you can actually do a sound recording directly into Smart Notebook software. So to record a sound object, what you need to do is a new page, I need an object. So let's select just a circle. Drop down menu, select sound. And you can either link an existing sound or you can record a sound. So let's call this um, sound. Let's start recording. This is the sound. Okay, and I can attach the recording. And click. This is the sound. Pretty neat feature. You probably didn't hear that. I'll show you that again. So let's select a shape or an object. Doesn't really matter. Here is a square. Select your drop down menu, select sound, and select start recording. This is the sound. This is the sound. That's a fantastic feature. I really like that feature. Um, with the tools, with the sorry, with the smart table, you can actually make the squares cells square. So if I select a table, for example, select my drop-down menu, adjust size, I can actually make them into squares. There's a few other options there you can add. Also what's here is the full screen options um, and you can customise your toolbar. This is what I was talking about in a previous video. So here is the view screen. Any one of these features, if you'd like these to be up on your toolbar, if you select customise toolbar, you can drop and drag them as needed.